this morning before we get started. If you weren't here uh, a couple weeks ago, actually three weeks ago because of uh, the uh, storm, uh, we started this series where we're looking at the different churches in Revelation, and we started with Ephesus, and one of the things that um, he spoke to them was that they had forgotten their first love, right? And so at the end of that sermon, kind of just spontaneously, I just felt the sense that um, if there's anything, as we build a church and we grow and we be kingdom-minded, we can never forget our first love. And I said, you know, so we're going to come together as a church And we're going to declare and share about our first love. And as simple as, why do you love Jesus? And it's one thing for me to be up here and and preach and talk about it. You guys hear from me or Tom and us uh, on a weekly basis or Joe. uh, But it's another thing to hear from the body of why we love Jesus. And as we are worshiping, that one song gets me every time. I am ready. Oh, man, I am ready to jump out of my skin. I don't know, just get up here and dance around, and, and I just want to run up here and see how much I love Jesus. And I, I thought of this verse in John 6.68, says, Lord, to whom shall we go? And uh, you have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus was talking to the disciples, saying, hey, do you want to leave too? And Peter says, where else should I go? And a lot of times when I'll be talking to someone that might be discouraged or going through something, they'll say that verse. Even I've said that, like, well, where else? I know I'm going through a hard time. I don't know why God seems silent during this time, but, but where else would I go? I know he has the key of life. And I thought, why would I want to go anywhere else? Like, I love Jesus. Amen? And so this morning, we're going to do something a little unique, is that we're just going to spend some time. We got this mic up here. And we're going to ask you to come up and share just why you love Jesus. What, what does he mean to you? It might be that recently he spoke something to you, something he did in your life. And, and just to be able to share as a community why we love Jesus. Uh, a verse I've been meditating on a lot uh, lately is Psalms 103. And um, it says, Bless the Lord. To bless the Lord is to declare something, to proclaim something. Bless the Lord, all my soul. I love this part. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Like that is so powerful. All that's within me, bless his holy name. Amen. And forget not his benefits, right? Who forgives us of all our iniquities, who heals us of all of our diseases, who redeems us from the pit and crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. Amen? I want to read just a couple verses and then we're going to start to share, okay? Sorry for the glasses here. I just got to, you know, got to do what I got to do, you know? So, uh, (laughs) this is from 1 John. Chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. And the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. And he uses this wonderful word. He says, beloved. It's that agape type of love. He says, beloved. We are God's children now. And what we will be has yet has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. And then in verse 7 of chapter 4, it says, Beloved, again, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever, whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Amen? And so, I don't know about you, one of the things I like about Father's Day or my birthday, I get the cards from the kids, is is to hear from my kids, I love you. Right? Like how much that just means to me, you know? And, And I thought about, I really do believe that when we bless the Lord, I think God loves to hear from us 
why we love him. And part of the thing about baptism, right, is a, it's a, it's a public declaration of an inward reality when we get baptized. It's this ceremony, right? We tell the world that I belong to Jesus. And so um, I'm going to open up the mic. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to open up the mic. And I know that might be super scary for some of you. Like, that is like, you don't understand, Sean. I am petrified to come up up here. And I know as soon as I get up here, I'm looking at all these people looking at me. I hear you. I mean, I don't because I'm not wired that way. It's easy for me to come up. But some of you, I know that's scary. So I encourage you. We really do want to hear from you. And, and I would just encourage you, almost an act of faith, just to come up and, and, uh, and share them because we really do want to hear from everybody. So, Lord, I just pray that we would honor you today, that our church, one thing we would never be accused of, God, is that we ever lost our first love. And so, Father, I just pray you would continue to stir faith in us this morning and that, Lord, our, our prayers, our worship, and our words would be a sweet aroma to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So the mic is open for anyone who would like to share. <laughs> Normally, I would wait and then be able to just say what he said or what she said. So I figured I'll put myself on the spot. My, I love Jesus because of the way he pursues us. It says in scripture that he loved us first. Um, and you see throughout history and throughout scripture how he is always reaching out to us to have a relationship with him. Scripture tells us none of us seek after God. And it's true, right? We, don't, we would never seek him, but he seeks us and pursues us. Um, we were talking about this in our life group the other night, just how Throughout, you know, whether it was Adam or Moses or Abraham, God always reached out and personally connected with them and pursued them to call them into his work. And so I love Jesus because he loved me first. And, and the verse that Jessica referred to, that he demonstrated his love to us while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Um, there's nothing that we had to do with that. It was all about him and it's action. That love is action. He demonstrated it and he died and he sent and it's all him for us. And I love him for that. Thanks. I felt the same way. I felt like if I wait, then I'm going to say something someone else said. But um, I love Jesus because I know that there is so much struggling going on right now and in the world and in my own personal family and life and um and i love jesus because there is nowhere else to turn except for him and he is the only thing and the only person that will ever give us the peace that we need and um and in all the discouragement and all the struggles and all the seasons in life um we can turn there and we can have an inner peace that you can never find anywhere else so that's why i love jesus Okay, I'm going to try to be succinct because I have a tendency to ramble. But why I love Jesus is because his um, His love for us is it's unshaking and it's steadfast. And um, it says, the Bible says that um, the world will hate us for loving Jesus. But just to be loved by our creator is such an amazing and wonderful thing. And so the only the only person's approval that we'll ever need to look for in life is the approval of God. I'm number, I'm number four in line. Um, so I'm going to kind of piggyback off of uh, just, I know, in my own life, uh, it's kind of been a rough season. It's been really hard and a lot of struggle. Um, but as I've been reading, and I've got gum in my mouth again, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I've been reading Genesis, and I've been really uh, just inspired and encouraged uh, through God's word in the, in the end of it, especially in the, uh, the story of Joseph. And it's, it's just so cool because... It's like as Christians, uh, we get this notion that like everything's going to be like fine and dandy when you become a Christian and 
it's not like you're going to be facing struggles or you're going to be going through hard times, but it's actually kind of the complete opposite. But God's so faithful in that he sustains us through it all. And like, I just love like what Joseph says, like, it's obviously a famous scripture at the end of chapter 50, but um, it says, but Joseph said to them, do not fear for I am, I am in the place of God. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Um, Joseph, the story of Joseph is so cool because it's, it's literally, uh, it's an, like a basically a representation of Jesus Christ when you read about it. You know, he was rejected by his family. He was thrown into slavery. He eventually got picked up by Potiphar. And then eventually he had to run from Potiphar's wife because obviously she wanted to basically sleep with him. And then he got sent to jail. And then he was there for two years. And then he eventually got out of jail. And then he made it, like, to be one of the highest rulers of Egypt right behind Pharaoh. But, like, this was a man of God. This was a God. This was a man that was ordained by God, but yet he struggled and he struggled for many years. So I think that's just something to have in the back of your mind is that even though you're struggling, you know, don't waste the time in the struggle, like press towards the Lord and become strong in him and build your faith. And remember that even though the enemy wants to do evil against you, God is going to take that thing that you're dealing with and he's going to make it for good. So um, praise the Lord on that. So, yeah. Um, I love the Lord because of all of you. (laughs) Um, So many of you have known just me and my family for years and um, just your your encouragement in our walks have just shown us God's love. So that's why I love the Lord. My word for the year is surrender. And um, the way I the way I see it is in my weakness, he shows his strength. So it's so cool to be to be able to tap into the Holy Spirit when you're exactly the opposite in the flesh. And I just love the fact that with Jesus, you could be the the exact person you want to be, but you have to tap into your flesh. So I just love the gift that he gives you with the Holy Spirit to be able to be something that you're really not in the flesh. And um, I just love it. It's It's an opposite way of thinking. And I just love him for that thing. One of the reasons that I love the Lord is just the fact that everything he wants from us or for us is for our good. Like, that just blows my mind. Like, it's a simple fact, but just like that everything that he asks of us, like the rules or whatever, it's all for our good. It's mind-blowing to me. (laughs) So that's just one thing. I uh, love the Lord because why not, right? (laughs) He keeps on giving and giving, and whenever he takes something, he uses it to give back. And he never fails, always loves, and all the other stuff people said. So, yeah. (laughs) All right. I love the Lord because he's so intimate in... He knows my thoughts um, even before I know them. And uh, I, I remember specifically a time where I was driving home, and all I could think was, I want pizza. <laughs> and um, my, I called my mom up, and she's, well, she called me. I was driving home, and she goes, guess what we're having for dinner? Pizza. And it was the, the exact kind that I wanted. And, uh, <laughs> like, you know, like, God knows my thoughts so much, and it's just so cool to see him do that. Um, you know, and he talks about commit your works to the Lord and your very thoughts will be established. Uh, so even the plans that I have, um, he 
makes a way for them to happen before I even take action to get those steps done, if that makes sense. Uh, so he goes before me, and again, it's just so intimate, and I, I really appreciate that and love him for it. So. I love the Lord because he, because he loves me. And at the age of five, I knew he loved me and called me. Um, that is such a great gift, just to know that somebody loves us and sees us in a way that we don't even see ourselves. So, thank you. That's uh, kind of what I was thinking. I was very young when I knew that God loved me. And if I cry, just know I'm an emotional person, so I'm totally okay, and I'll cry one second and laugh the next, so I'm fine. <laughs> um, but uh, from the moment I was, before I was even born, I think Missy and Tom might remember, um, the doctors basically said, don't even bother. It's better to kill the child to let it live but God gave my parents a vision that said I would be fine and whole and from I don't know I was probably five or something like that and I said I will do everything I can to prove that my God was right <laughs> and uh, many of you know I uh, strive to do as many skills as possible. <laughs> um, and I love God because he chose me. He didn't have to. He didn't have to bring a miracle into my life, but he did. And every moment, especially when I'm alone, and I'm crying out, and I say, God, where are you? And I just hear this voice in the back of my head. He's like, I am where I always am. I'm right here. And that's just always, always from, <laughs> from the moment that I can remember is hearing his voice saying, I'm still here. And I'm still for you. And I, I still got it. I love the Lord because he is the constant amongst everything else that changes. Um, when everything shifts or when the things that we invest ourselves in die, he's always there. Um, his word remains and his love remains. Um, there's nothing else that I want to be a part of or there's nothing else that I could ever ask for but that. So. Uh, very strange to be on this side of the mic, I'll tell you. <laughs> My word of the year is opportunity, and this couples with the fact that God is a savior in more ways than any of us can ever truly realize. When I was four months old, I was in the hospital. Every doctor, every examination, every scan said that I should have, it should have been a fatal case of RSV pneumonia, and yet here I stand now. 2006, when I was in marching band, I suffered a neck injury that should have left me paralyzed. God saved me from that, too. 2009 was the year I truly understood who God was and what God was all about, and that all started with Sean and his life group. And it all really came into focus in 2013 when I was involved in a car accident that also should have, should have left me dead. And yet I walked out unscathed. That was when I truly understood that all those times that I'm still here is because of God. God had a reason to keep me here. 2015, I got baptized, and that allowed me the opportunity to face a fear of the ocean, a fear of deep water. Saw me walk out on Margate Beach, get myself dunked, <laughs> scared out of my wits. 
but God gave me the opportunity to face that and to beat that. And all those times that he kept me here has given me every opportunity to continue to serve him, not just back in that booth, but just to serve him in every interaction I have at my workplace, everywhere I go. God has given me every opportunity and, and saved me countless times to be able to continue to take those opportunities. That's just one of many reasons why I love the Lord. Oh no, he has notes. <laughs> and he's gonna put them on a stand. <laughs> I did text Tom and Sean and say, I promise I'm not gonna preach. <laughs> it might look like I'm going to, but. Testimony day is not for tall people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I was really inspired to, to share something um, as soon as Sean mentioned this opportunity a couple of weeks ago. I was like, oh, I can't dodge this one. Um, I was born in a, in a Christian home, and I accepted Jesus as my Savior when I was really, really young. Uh, and I grew up in church. I went to Christian school, I went to Christian college, I went to Christian grad school. Um, I have served in various pastoral roles at several churches for more than two decades. I have worked at Christian schools and Christian colleges and Christian graduate schools teaching the Bible. And um, I have been in and around ministry basically my whole life from birth. Um, so it would make sense that I'm one of those people that's really in love with Jesus. The problem... <laughs> is that very idea of in love with Jesus has, has been something that um, most of my life has just really escaped me. Um, my beliefs have always been biblical. My faith has always been real. But that deeper level of connection and intimacy with God is something that my whole life I have always felt was lacking. Um, and frankly, it's always been very frustrating to me, and it's been very embarrassing to me at times. You know, when you go to a pastor's conference and you go, huh, what am I missing here? Um, I can't tell you how many times in my life I have said, what is wrong with me, God? What is wrong with me? And I think there are a couple of things um, in my life, in my background, that, that from the outside would probably look like advantages that actually have kind of worked against me in, in a weird sort of way. And one of them is just kind of the style of Christianity I grew up in, and some of you might identify with this. Um, it was somewhat legalistic, you might say, uh, and it definitely emphasized the ideas of knowing and doing God's word, which are not bad things. But there was so much focus on know God's word and do God's word and not nearly as much focus on the idea of truly connecting with God. And especially not the idea of the feelings that go along with connecting with God. Feelings were like dangerous. You can't follow your feelings. And there's truth in that as well. Um, my, my background, my upbringing in church gave me an unbelievable foundation of truth. Um, I mean, by the time I was in high school, I probably knew more Bible than, you know, many of the adults in my life. Uh, and it brought me to faith. You know, I was saved at a very young age, and that was legit, and that was real. And that was part of my upbringing. So I'm grateful for all that, but I think one of the things that happened to me in that was it kind of, it kind of made me turn my spiritual life into more of a system to follow than a relationship to pursue. Um. And the second thing that I think has kind of worked against me is the reality that I've spent most of my career in professional ministry, which might, you know, some people that aren't in ministry might scratch your head, but these guys that have been in ministry, you know exactly where I'm going with this. You spend so much of your time in God's word preparing to teach it to other people or lead other people in spiritual exercise that it's really easy to blur the lines 
between your relationship with God and your job that is supposed to be for God. And man, you, are, you can get lost in the sauce when it comes to walking with the Lord in ministry. And I can honestly say it's only very recently that I feel the Lord has given me some sort of breakthrough in this area in my life. Um, and the timing is really kind of amazing. Joe's message a few weeks ago, um, Joe, if I was the only person in the room that day you preached, it would have been um, a, a universe-shattering message from the Lord if I was the only person in the room. And if it touched anybody else half the way it touched me, God used you in a phenomenal way that day. Uh, because that message that Joe preached um, about intimacy with God really helped me start thinking about things uh, in a very different way. And oddly enough, conversations with my daughter, Ashley, 19 years old, away at college, and her telling me about her relationship with the Lord, don't ever get the idea that your kids can't teach you something. Because <laughs> I started going, it's, it's really weird, I'm like, what am I missing that my own kid has? So you grew up in my home, and somehow she got something that I don't feel like I've got. And so between that and Joe's message, the Lord just like, got me upside the head with a two by four really well. But where it left me was, was at a point of just feeling kind of desperate again about what it really means to love God. And when Sean started, you know, talking about that a couple of weeks ago and, you know, said the, the love God, thing, I'm like, oh my goodness, this just, it's like God's pounding me with this right now. What's going on? And I just, at that point, I just started begging God I said, let me connect with you in a way that I never have before. I, I don't know why it's been missing for my whole life with all my background and all my experience and everything about who I am in Christ. Why is this peace not what I know it should be? And I just started begging God, Lord, fix this. Help me figure out who you really are and what this love relationship thing with you is. And I think another one of my problems, kind of going back to my system of living for the Lord, has always been my prayer life. I've always felt like I needed to kind of hit all the points on a checklist in my prayer time. And, um, you know, it wasn't like this liturgical recitation where I've got a book of prayers that I read or anything. But I'd find myself trying to make sure I prayed for all the right things. You know, and um, don't forget anybody. Um, or, or God might not know that they have a need if you forget to talk to him about them. You know, it's like, pray for your kids today or something might go wrong. Um, something might go wrong even if you do pray for your kids, you know. Um, and, you know, remember to confess and praise and worship and, and then ask, but only ask God for things that you know he's going to approve of because that's the prayers he answers. And, and I would just lose focus, and I would get discouraged and frustrated, and I'd feel like I was bouncing my prayers off the ceiling, and that doesn't help a relationship. So with Joe's message and my conversations with Ashley, something just hit me, and my frustration that I was feeling, and I just sat down one day, and I just started talking to God. More specifically, I just started telling him, what was in my heart and what was in my mind. No script, no format, no list, just telling him what was on my heart and my mind. And he started answering me. Now, I'm absolutely not one of those God talks to me in an audible voice kind of guys. And God certainly has answered my prayers before in the past. It's not like I've lived my whole life of unanswered prayer. God has answered many prayers, big prayers. But what started happening was I would ask God a question, and then the answer would be right there. In such a way that the answer was clear in my head, but it was clearly not from my head. It, it processed those prepositions for a minute. <laughs> the answer was clear in my head, but it clearly was not from my head. Usually the answer that would come into my mind was a direct quote of scripture or directly related to some scripture that was tucked away 
from 50 years of Bible learning. So, side note, if, if you've ever wondered if Bible memorization is just system Christianity, it's not. Because I have been astounded recently in what Scripture has done in my mind as I've just started talking to God. So what I found myself was having actual conversations with God ah! <laughs> and digging through the Bible to find those passages that were popping into my head and reading them and then digging a little bit more to find something that was connected to it and using Bible study skills that for most of my life had been academic skills to pass a class or prepare a sermon. And suddenly, it was how I was having a real, personal, intimate, quiet time with God through prayer and Bible study. What a novel idea. <laughs> and obviously, when you have real conversation with a real person about real life, you start to develop real relationship. That sounds a lot like a sojourn motto. We should work on that. And as much as it is still a little bit hard for me to say, you start to feel the love in that relationship. And you start to want it more and you start to desire and you start to understand the connection. And, and part of me is like, why in the world didn't I figure this out decades ago? Like truly, what has been wrong with me? And then there's another part of me that says, maybe it's just the coffee talking because I decided to have a cup of coffee with Jesus in the mornings. I'm like, is this like a caffeine addiction that I'm feeling here and, and not Jesus? But if there's anything in my spiritual background that I know is 100% foundational, it's this, that God's word is true. And God's word says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Our Christmas sermon series here that these guys preach talked about making a shift. And this is the shift that God is helping me make. It's really, in some ways, just a small shift in how I relate to God personally and conversation with him. But it is helping me figure out in a way that in my whole life of Christianity, I've never really grasped before. It's helping me understand his love for me and helping me learn to love him. And so if I could just encourage you, maybe a shift in your life along these lines of loving the Lord, just talk to him. Just ask him the questions that maybe you're afraid to ask. And then listen to what he has to say to you. It's not a magic formula. It's not a snap your fingers and wave a magic wand. It's a relationship with a real person, and it will grow if you want it to. And uh, that's how I'm learning to love Jesus. Rob, I love your testimony about walking with your son in, in the beginning and saying, I love this kid so much, and God saying, I love you even more. I like when God teaches us lessons first person. So I have the great privilege of uh, working in a school in a class that's labeled behavioral disability. And if you're asking how can a behavior be a disability, it's the right question. Um, so working in this room, I've got to learn first person how God can love you could look at these kids and say they're cast aside and forgotten. They definitely have been in, in their personal lives. And how God has taught me that I was sent for the lost and the very lost and the people who see no value in themselves. Maybe they don't have the skill. Maybe they have been dealt the worst of hands. And being in this room where the people will be like, how do you deal with these kids? God has shown me I was sent for those. I love them, and I see the value in them. Because these people see no value in these kids. Not everyone, but a lot. And they look at them and say, what will they ever be? What can they ever become? There's no value there. But Christ says they have the highest value. And he's no respecter of persons. So I love the Lord, 
because there's no one who can be cast so far away that he will not see the value and it'll be the greatest value. So that's why I love the book. Wow, I'm short. Um, oftentimes I will wake up in the morning sing, literally outwardly singing a song. I'll wake up from my sleep and I'm singing a song. And oftentimes it's a song that I haven't heard in years. It would be a song that I might have learned when I was a little kid in, uh, in church. And the interesting thing is the song, the theology of the song will always be applicable to where I'm at in that moment in life. I might be struggling with something, like I, if I'm fearful, I might wake up in the morning singing, my peace I give unto you. It's nothing that I think through, that I think about before I go to bed. I just literally wake up outwardly singing a song. So one particular morning, I woke up, and I sit up in the bed, and I'm singing, you've got a friend in me, Bonara. Hey, you've got a friend in me, Bonara. I, literally, and I sat up, and I went, I said, all right, Lord, why in the world am I waking up? I haven't heard this song since my kids were since at least 15 years. I haven't heard it. I haven't seen the movie. Why in God's name am I waking up singing, you've got a friend in me? And honestly, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said, because I want you to know you got a friend in me. I'll always be your friend. And for what I was dealing with in that moment, that really touched my heart. So one of the reasons why I love him is he's a better friend to me than I've been to him. He's never judged me. Even when I've been wrong, he's never hit me. He's never judged me. He's never, he's just been a friend. And so when anytime I think of the Lord, yes, he's my Lord. Yes, he's my God. Yes, he's my, all those words. But for me, when I think of Jesus, the word that is most prevalent, he's my friend. And I love him for that. you having hair like <laughs> most of you people. So I'm going to put this back on. And, and the scarf is because I'm just a hipster, you know what I mean? But, um, man, there's so many reasons why I love Jesus. Um, but one of the reasons why I love Jesus is his character and uh, his purpose for our lives. So to break that down, my whole life I was extremely motivated intense and competitive I'm still a little competitive but uh, you know I thought how do you get wealthy well you get rich how do you get rich well you work 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 and you save all your money you know how do you gain how do you gain freedom you harness it all in and you just control every situation you know how do you get back at people well you get angrier than them and you hit them <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> Once I really started learning who Jesus is and his character, he's like, Rob, how do you get wealthy? You give all your money away. How do you gain control? How do you get freedom? You let go. How do you get back? How do you get vengeance? You don't punch him. You just forgive him. And, like, once you break that down, it's just the purpose behind all that. You just feel so, man, like, it feels right, and that's not how I was raised at all, and this just feels right. So um, that's one of the reasons why I love Jesus. I wasn't going to do this, but... <laughs> I got sweaty palms, and I was like, Ugh, darn it. Um, but one of the reasons that I love Jesus is because um, I mess up so much, and I run away from him, and he forgives me every single time, and he loves me, and that never goes away, even when I uh, like sin against him and do things that I know aren't good. Um, he still loves me no matter what. I think that's like crazy because like no one could love you that much but he does 
and it's just so uh it gives such a peaceful I just feel like peace when I think about that so yeah by the way age I love you so much I'm really proud of you All right so he saved me from a life of darkness and eventual eternal misery. He freed me. He redeemed me. He gave me purpose and showed me why I have the gifts and passions that I do for him, for his glory. He's my hope and my calm in a storm that I feel like has been super strong lately, but I know I can rely on him to give me peace and, and eternal hope. He died on a cross so that I might have a relationship with him knowing that I would reject and ignore him over and over and over. He forgives me, and he's the answer and the truth that I was missing for 19 years of my life. And he understands our pain because he was human. And those are just some of the reasons why I love Jesus very much. Hi. Um, I love Jesus because he made it safe for me to love him back. Um, if you're related to me or a close friend of mine and you're loved by me, you've also been disappointed by me, um, hurt by me, um, let down. And I've done all of those things in my relationship with Jesus, but he's made it safe for me to come back. Um, I've never experienced being taught by a teacher who is open to being questioned, open to being doubted, um, open to being ignored, and still made it safe for me to come back. So, thank you. I'm one of those people who's like super terrified and like like you're talking about but um, I didn't write it down so I'm probably gonna forget what I'm saying halfway through but um that's one of the reasons I was really scared to come up here and I was like I don't know what I'm gonna say I don't know what I'm gonna say I know I love Jesus but I don't know what I'm gonna say or whatever and that's the reason one of the reasons I love him is because he wouldn't hesitate to come up here to speak about me to say he loves me he wouldn't hesitate at all and like that's just so powerful to think that he loves us that much that he wouldn't even think twice like I did and it makes me feel guilty but like I just wanted to say that I just love him because he's so amazing and he loves me and he wouldn't hesitate to do anything for me like he didn't hesitate at the cross Yeah, I was really nervous to come up here. Same, same boat. But um, I just love the intentionality of Christ and just how he sees each person for who they are. Um, one thing that I always would struggle with is thinking, like, I'm a burden to people. Or we all have our lives that we tell ourselves, but he sees us, like, for who we are, and he loves us regardless. And um, that just is always mind-blowing to me, the fact that he loves me regardless of what I'm going to do, what I've done. And, um, yeah, just very grateful for that every day. So yesterday at the ladies' breakfast, um, one of my words in the past was story. And um, I just love, at this time in my life, being able to see how God has woven my story. So um, just one little example is that um, I always loved, when I was a little girl, reading the stories of um, The Hiding Place, which is Corey Ten Boom, like people that hid the Jews during World War II. If you, even now, if you were like, oh, here's a World War II movie about Jewish people being hidden and rescued. Like, I want to go see that. That's still, like, a love in my heart. So since I was young, 
And then when Lee and I moved here um, to South Jersey to be part of a church, um, we needed jobs because that was like, you're going to do youth and music and it's going to be volunteer because we have no money. So we um, moved down here to get jobs. And um, I interviewed at what is now Cairn University. Um, back then it was Philadelphia Biblical University. And um, my person who was interviewing for me for this job said, now there's one really important part that I want you to know. You were required in your job to go to Germany every summer to help run the, the um, summer program for missionaries um, and Europeans who it's too hard for them to get to the United States. So we bring the Masters of Education program to them. Do you think that was an accident? <laughs> Absolutely not. Like that was like any other country, any other country, but Germany, Germany, my Germany. So even then I was like, God planted that seed in my heart when I was really young and getting me ready, getting me ready and bringing that to fruition years later um and he's done that in several ways to me and so that's what I love and that's why I love sharing stories about God I, I'll tell that story to a new group and I'm sorry especially ladies like you might hear over and over because that's an important part of my relationship with God like God knew God prepped me and he gave me the, that verse like the desires of my heart because guess what he put it in there and then it wasn't when, you know, it wasn't when I was seven. It was when I was 25 that I got that opportunity. So that's why I, I just love him for planning that for us, for the good, for the knowing, for all of it. So. So, uh, number one, my ADHD brain is like this right now. So, like, I, I don't know how I'm going to connect the dots just yet. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's kind of like a combination of so many things I just um, have been hearing. Um, and, yes, like how God knows us. He knows our thoughts. And even despite um, that, but he also knows what we haven't thought of yet. He knows what we need so he puts uh, people in certain places and that's just something he's been like showing me so much in this last uh, past month and he, he's just showing me what I need and I'm doing what I want but he's showing me what I need um one day I just walked in here last month um really feeling like super discouraged Joe Bologna comes up to me he's like God's telling me to encourage you I'm like well, I'm like how do you know me that much <laughs> And then I'm just in like in the season of darkness and stuff, and 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 I, I go to Coastal Thursday night, just show up for the last like not even the beginning of the last song, just the ending of the last song. I walk in, I just see a, somebody wearing a sweatshirt in the back. He says, even in my darkness, I'll still worship. I go up to him. I, say, I really like that shirt. He says, I hate this. I hate this sweater. Like it's too big on me. I don't. I don't know. God just told me to wear it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Like, I think I know why he told you to wear it. Um, you know, all these things. I'm like, even about the live stream, I'm just like so, so discouraged. I go to Mission Point on, on, on Wednesday, and he's like, I've been watching your live stream, like the videos. It's like, you guys are really doing a good job and everything. I was like, wow, like, uh, or even, even today, I didn't know that I needed to worship. Sean comes up to me. He goes like, just fine, just go, go, go worship. And I start worshiping, and I just, all you can just feel like his presence just telling me like to sing and worship God. Or when he came up, just forgetting those foundational truths, he's like reminding me like you need this and stuff like that. So I just love God because he knows us so much more past our thoughts. He knows what we need. He's going to he's gonna po try to point you in the right direction. And yes, at the end, it's still our choice. And that's just something I'm like wrestling with. But like God is not going to stop reaching out to you despite what you're doing, despite where where. You are, you know, he, he loves you 
and he's going to continuously love you and reach out to you. So th this is why I love God back. That's why I love God. And we're going to celebrate. I know we're going longer today, but we're okay, right? Like as the people of God that are serious about God, that it's okay that our timetable doesn't always work out. Amen. And I know that there's so much more that you guys would love to share. And there's a lot in your heart. And so appreciate the wisdom, the insight. I'm, I'm so full and so encouraged by sharing that as a body, guys. So thank you so much. You've encouraged the body, right? There was probably something you guys shared today that someone really needed to hear. So now we're going to uh, take communion together, and we're going to remember the reason for our hope, why we can do what we did today, because he so loved us. He gave his only son for us, amen. Amen. So uh, Tom and the worship team is going to just kind of lead us through, through communion. For those of you who are helping out with communion, we'll just meet over at the table.